so till last lecture we all have discussed the uh, respiration in the respiration as we all have learned the respiratory means we learned about the type of respiration then we learned the properties of the respiratory surface and thereafter we uh, learn in detail about the comparative study of the respiratory surface in the various organism right so same way the next part of the unit that is the circulation we all are also going to learn circulation in same way first we will understand what is circulation introduction basic introduction as we have done into the respiration then there after types of circulation now in respiration we have learned the component of respiration that is the respiratory surface in detail so now here we all are going to learn in detail about the circulating fluids what are going to circulate then after that after uh, learning the circulatory fluid we will again start the study of the com uh, comparative circulation in the various organism as we all have done into the respiration now see why this circulation and respiration kept together because they are linked okay in the last lecture when we were dealing with the human respiration i told you that oxygen is mixing into the blood and transport now how does this transport of material occurs it requires something suppose i am uh, means having i am having some product and i want to give it to someone so what how it will go i have to personally take it to that person or i must have some vehicle or i must have some other medium so what we require something so here the circulating fluid is acting as a vehicle which is transporting the material now see what type of material is been transported we all are going to learn in detail transporting fluids but first before that we will understand circulation now we all know that every cell in the living organism it requires its nutrient right we all have already learned about the cellular respiration in that we have learned the types of circulation in that we have learned the cellular respiration and in that we have seen that each cell requires oxygen for the cellular respiration and now see when the cells they are taking the oxygen so for what purpose they are taking the uh, oxygen for doing the metabolic activity students once again i repeat metabolic activities are the chemical reaction conducted within the body of the organism in respiration also i told you this definition but it is remember in uh, body whatever chemical reaction are taking place so these reactions are called as the metabolic activity so cell is also doing the metabolic activity so each living cells produces the excretory material now see these are the chemical reaction we all have are doing the chemical reaction so we know that after doing some chemical reaction uh, the by products are been formed so these by products are the excretory material now if it is protein so we know proteins are made up of the amino acids so when this proteins are uh, what is the food actually digestion food digestion means conversion of the complex substances into the simple one that means you have eaten one pizza okay the pizza base is made up of the all purpose flour that, that is the carbohydrate in our language then the sauces might have some type of vitamins chemical part or additives i am not talking about here 
so whatever sauces are there on your pizza are having little bit of the uh, you can say the vitamins right it will also have some type of veggies on it so this veggies will also have the minerals vitamins right now uh, the cheese you have taken will have the fatty acid that is the fat contained in it so likewise you have eaten one pizza but now here the body digestive system in digestive system we are going to learn in detail but here i am just giving you example okay so one simple are i had only one uh, small triangle of the pizza but this triangle have so many things now body has to convert now body will not take pizza as it is it is going to convert it into the simple substance so whatever uh, protein part you have taken will be converted into the simple amino acids whatever uh, carbohydrate you have taken will be converted into the simple glucose form because body blood can take glucose only cell can take glucose only for performing their uh, work to get energy they require the glucose then thereafter whatever part type of fat it is oil it is cheese it is butter whatever you have taken in the body is going to come uh, means convert it into the fatty acid so this simple substance conversion requires lots of chemical reaction so definitely lots of lots of nitrogenous waste will produce not only this this will also produce the carbon dioxide so it is very necessary to transport all this excretory material as a two way traffic so two way traffic means it should be uh, taken from the now final product will brought to the cell which are going to perform this task so they have to take it now suppose if i want a dress to be stitched so definitely i need to go to the tailor then again i have to go back to the tailor to take my dress so same way the cells those who are going to do all this task so we have to take the product there to the uh, and from the there the final product as well as the excretory material has to be taken right so for that particular reason there is a need of the two way traffic carrying also and uh, taking back also so how this is done so this is done by the circulatory mechanism in the circulatory mechanism all the tissue they baths into the circulatory fluid so this circulatory fluid takes whatever excretory materials are been produced by this tissue cells organs and thereafter it transport to the respective uh, type of the system suppose this material uh, is carbon dioxide so you all know the carbon dioxide will be taken where it will be taken to the lungs so that it should be returned to the air understood and if suppose it is the nitrogenous waste so nitrogenous waste how it will go nitrogenous waste directly cannot be taken it should be dissolved into the water and uh, thereafter it must be taken to the kidney then kidney is going to filter it and mix it into the water and will form the urine if it is digestive so if uh, the fecal material must be formed by your intestine right so likewise the wastes are been segregated and the extra salt is there definitely it must be given to the salt gland and it should be removed out in the form of the sweating so all these things must be taken to the respective organs so who is doing this all so what happens whatever task is been done by tissue so they uh, dump their waste product into the circulatory fluid and this circulatory fluid is taking it to the respective organ now 
when we talk about the uh, features so circulatory system have the main feature means what they have first of all the most important is the circulatory fluid this circulatory fluid can be the blood it can be the hemolymph it can be the transport material means other materials are also been transported like water then hormone we are going to learn it in detail into the next lecture then there must be say, uh, some type of the uh, means capillaries or you can say the close uh, entity must be there so here blood vessels are there so this blood vessel prevents the mixing of the circulatory fluid into the interstitial fluid then how they carry it from the interstitial fluid they carry it by the diffusion then there must be some pump now you want water to come to your house and you stay on the third floor so definitely you require some pump which will bring water there so definitely there is a need of the pump so this pumping organ is generally called as heart so this the heart is because of the beating pumps the circulatory fluid to the vessel we all know it is vessels are just pipe like structure children so this vessel can get clogged if the fluid is very slow so there must be some pressure there must be some vibration so all this is given by the pumping and this pumping is done by the heart so first we will discuss about the types of the circulatory system when we talk about the types of circulatory system animals uh, have two kind of the circulatory system one is open second is the closed open name itself says that it is going to be having the open body chamber so that means whatever circulating material is there will be present into the body cavity then closed so it will have the closed piping that is the blood vessels let us discuss in detail about the open circulation now see uh, when the main circulating fluid it runs through the open spaces such as cilium cavity sinuses at any point bathing tissue directly and without confining to the blood vessel through the course then that is going to be called as the open circulation i repeat when the circulatory fluids means whatever circulation either it is hemolymph or whatever so if it is running through the open spaces uh, like cilium cavity then sinus or whatever so that is going to be called as the open circulation the point to be remember that the open circulation does not require the blood vessels they are lacking so obviously this phenomena that uh, you can understand can be seen into the uh, lower animals only so all invertebrates point to be remember all in one vertebrates have the open type of circulation except fin okay uh, i am i have already made one video on one invertebrate that is sepia so you go through with that video is that particular case you will find that the circulatory system is closed type but some annelids like earthworm and nerys some cephalopods like example just now i told you i have made the video on sepia circulatory system so they have the closed type circulatory system so uh, the important to understand is that is open circulation either the blood vessel are totally absent or if present they are not complete means uh, they will be present into the small small region only means incomplete type of uh, circulatory uh, blood vessels will be there now see this circulation or this blood vessel will propel organ direction to flow the circulating fluid after which the circulating fluids will leave the blood vessel and it will flow freely into the open space means small small uh, vessels will be there 
incomplete pipelines so you can say so what will happen that they they will be restricted to some organal or some region only and thereafter they will be open into the body cavity and thereafter the blood will flow into the open space so therefore the circulating fluid in the case of open circulation can never be a blood right because blood is bound to mix with the ciliary fluid and that is going to be called as the hemolymph okay lymph and blood both thing will be mixed here so that's why it is called as the hemolymph so hemolymph occupying the cavity is called as the hemocils because the cavity in science is termed as seal and cilium okay so the cavity is filled with the hemolymph that's why that cavity will be called as the hemocil since the hemolymph passes through the open spaces its speed its movement will be very very slow right due to the resistance now what type of resistance will come resistance will come from the uh, organelles however efficiency of exchange of material then transport will enhance by the respiratory pigment like hemocyanin hemoerythrin because all these pigments will be dissolved into the plasma directly or you can say the hemolymph plasma or hemolymph which is direct contact with the tissue that's why there is no barrier or wall of the blood vessel and capillaries are found in well developed circulatory system in the advanced form means whatever pigments are there it is already present into the uh, blood only so what happens that direct and this blood is uh, just like filled one okay so for that particular reason there is no blood vessel and there is no such barrier so what is going to happen it is going to mix directly and it will come in contact so first uh, one example will understand here uh, for the open circulatory system is the cockroach so when we talk about the cockroach uh, in the case of the cockroach anterior i told you many time anterior means the upper so in the cockroach anterior aorta arises from the anterior most chamber of the heart now definitely they require the pumping organ so that the blood will circulate to the entire body so anterior most chamber will be aorta then anterior aorta runs for a short distance it will give direction to the hemolymph run towards the brain now anterior is so definitely it will go to the upper region so what is there so it will run towards the brain ensuring the brain supplied with the most oxygenated hemolymph so uh, whatever oxygen is given to the body parts so the most oxygenated blood will go to the brain region then hemolymph oozing out of the anterior aorta enters into the hemocil and slowly slowly passes to the organs before being collected by the ostia of 13 chamber of the heart how many chambers are there in the heart 13 chambers at the various antero posterior locations the point to be remembered in this is anterior aorta will give uh, blood oxygenated blood to the brain and the next point you need to remember is that the heart is 13 chamber and whatever blood is coming or you can say the oxygenated blood is coming it is going to the anterior posterior location that means the long big heart is there then see here it is hmm? now second type of circulatory system is the closed circulatory system now closed circulatory system uh, circulatory fluid whatever is present it will not allow to leave the well evolved circulatory uh, blood vessels so whatever circulatory fluid is there it will be uh, present into the blood vessel now what it will comprise of it will comprise of heart arteries arterioles capillaries venules and veins i repeat it will comprise of heart arteries arterioles capillaries venules and veins so thus there is no mixing of blood you can see that blood is completely 
packed into the vessels like so there is no mixing of blood with the silamic fluid so silam or the cavity is uh, having its own fluid so silamic fluid will not be called as the hemolymph here that will be silamic fluid only and neither the uh, silam will be called as the hemocil it will be called as the silam only understood so the efficiency of circulation will definitely increase here with the increase the speed of the circulation if it is going by the pipe if it is complete the open silam so the speed there was a barrier that means many organelles were coming in contact so here all the barrier are will be reduced the blood is having well defined place that is the pipeline system so definitely here the speed will increase and well uh, defined vessel will get pressure now pumping organ heart they have however the thin walls of capillaries will pose a barrier between blood and tissue why because it is uh, having very thin walls so grossly it will affect the transport of substance and gases which are the main function of the circulatory system means this blood vessel have the thick wall then how the exchange will occur we know we understood till now that the circulatory system is designed for the purpose of the transport so how this transport will occur this blood vessel shall act as a barrier so this blood vessel they divide they redivide and they form the capillaries so these capillaries are having the thin wall and with the diffusion uh, this thin wall they are exchanging the material from the silam understood so this thin wall can uh, freely exchange the material from the silam so existence of interstitial fluid is required right there must be some interstitial fluid so this interstitial fluid is helping to take whatever uh, material just now i told you in the beginning of the lecture that whatever cellular waste is been produced the cells dump them out so where they dump there must be some medium so this medium is called as interstitial fluid i repeat interstitial fluid so what is interstitial fluid children interstitial fluid is the fluid or you can say the liquid medium which is present outside the cell or it is present between the cells or the tissues and uh, this in which the cells or tissues or the organ bathes so whatever uh, thing whatever ex, uh, excretory materials are there it is present in that so this exchanges with the capillary so under the blood pressure some amount of the plasma oozes out through the fine capillary pores same pressure also squeezes out the tissue fluid also so these get mixed plasma in the small tissue spaces that exist between the out wall of the capillary and the cell membrane so this makes the liquid and this is called as interstitial fluid which bath the tissues directly it facilitates the desired two way exchange means whatever things good things are present into the blood now your digestive system cannot reach to the each part of the body right so whatever nutrients are been produced or simplified by the digestive system will be dumped into the blood so these nutrients uh, will be provided to each and every cell so what digestive system will do it will dump its nutrient or it will give its nutrients to the blood so blood will carry all this nutrient and will provide from head to toe each and every uh, part then same way whatever uh, cellular mechanism has done cellular metabolic activities are been done so whatever waste they have produced they will dump it into the interstitial fluid so what this circulatory system will do through the capillary with the help of diffusion it will take all the waste material to the capillary and from the capillary it will go to the respective space so this is about the open and close circulatory system so at this note we'll stop for today but tomorrow we are going to learn about the single and double circulation and we'll understand how the mechanism of circulation is operated 
so uh, for this note we'll stop for today